Happy morning to each and every one. We surely thank the Lord for His continued goodness to us, His children, for preserving our lives up to this very moment, and most especially for this wonderful opportunity that we can take part and be spiritually refreshed once again through this week of spiritual emphasis. And we thank the Lord for sending His servant, His chosen messenger for the week, our very own CPUC uh, personal ministries director, our Sabbath school and ACS ministries uh, department director, in the person of Pastor James Rubrico. And uh, this week's uh, study, we will be uh, learning more about uh, the prophetic faith in history. On behalf of uh, Adventist Hospital Cebu and Cebu City SDA Church, I would like to warmly welcome each of you to our week of prayer. And of course, ato usab gi abi-abi ang ato mga kaigsuunan, ato mga kagalaan, nga nakikuban ka nato pinagi sa ato ang uh, live streaming tungod kita live man sa ato ang Facebook uh, Adventist Hospital Cebu page. O mausab sa ito ang Cebu City SDA Church uh, Facebook page and atong YouTube account. And so if you are happy this morning, if you are uh, grateful to our Heavenly Father, please look at the person seated beside you and tell him or tell her, I am happy to see you this morning. You look beautiful and good looking today. Thank you. you know, God's people ought to be thankful and ought to be happy all the time. Uh, ang atomic of prayer, mga kagsunan, karoon ang unang adlaw, o ganis siya, mo culminate, mo tapos ganis siya, karoon sabado sab. Akong basahon ang adunay mga bahin after my part, atong pagkakantahon, ang atong opening song, which is our theme song entitled, Faith is the Victory. And then the opening prayer, ighatag ni, ni Chaplain Metho Flores. Og ang minsahi sa awit ng mga andam sa atong nahuna o kasing-kasing sa pagdawat sa pulong sa Gino, ihatag ni siya ni Sister Hazel Arcelo. And then the message of the Lord will be given by Pastor James Rubrico. And after the message, we'll be having the Garden of Prayer to be led by Pastor uh, Siriaco Valencia. And then we'll have the closing song, our theme song, and the closing prayer will be offered by Sister Joyce Gudilano. Our song leader this morning is Sister Carol Modesto, and at the piano is Sister Lovely Mohagan. May we feel God's presence as we feast on His Word, as we will be spiritually enlightened through this week of prayer.
for opening song, let's all stand and sing our theme song. Faith is the victory. Let's all kneel. Let's all kneel for prayer. Gracious and loving Heavenly Father, the heavens declare your mighty name, and we adore you because you are our God. You are the creator of this vast universe. And we exalt everything unto you, dear Lord, this wonderful morning. Thank you for this opportunity to gather in this capacity with one purpose, and that is to lift up your name. And we invite your presence this wonderful day as we will listen to your words through Pastor Rubrico. We entrust our program, dear Lord, for this week as we start this week of devotion. May it be that we will be spiritually refreshed, and we will be more closer unto you as we listen to your words daily. We entrust our lives and we thank you for giving us success. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen.
Praise God for the melody of song offered to the Lord this morning. Okay, good morning, everybody. And uh, I'd like to send my pleasant hello to, to you, to the uh, honorable audience for today, the Adventist Hospital Cebu employees. And also I'd like to send my greetings, my sweet greetings to our national and global audience today. Uh, may God bless you as you lis listen to these uh, presentations for this week, a uh, one-week presentation uh, via Prophetic Faith in History. This is our general title. That's why we have our theme song, uh, uh, Faith in Victory. Okay, uh, today... We have a question. If Christ is the answer, what is the question? This is a critical question, by the way. And uh, this is a question of the day and a question of the century. Not only century, it's a question of the millennium. Under the cosmic conflict in prophetic history, we will be going to present to you this week until the uh, Sabbath about the controversy between God, between good and evil, between God and the devil. So today, my beloved brethren, we are we're going to, to start the opening salvo of the week of prayer, the spiritual emphasis for this week. Our First topic is at the corridors of the immediate future. This is about the uh, situation of the world today, especially the people of God and the world as a whole, that we are now standing at the brink of eternity. We know that very well. The Adventist people are waiting for that, by the way. We do not pray for the end but we are waiting for the fulfillment of prophecy to be fulfilled in our very own generation. So praise God that uh, we have now the, the, still the freedom of expression and the freedom of worship. Okay? 
so that we can talk each other about the love of Jesus Christ and the guidance of the people of God from time immemorial until today, until the second coming of Jesus Christ. I'd like to thank you for inviting me to be with you this uh, one week uh, 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 spiritual emphasis so that we can talk about the current developments of the uh, prophetic fulfillments in our very own time today. At the corridors of the immediate future, this is about Jesus Christ who predicted uh, uh, from his uh, prophetic eye as he looked down the corridors of the coming centuries, predicted about the coming conglomeration of, of political and economic uh, game of the end times. And also, the, the prophetic forecast about the great tribulation that is coming. Oh, the Seventh-day Adventist people understand that immediately. We know that uh, this generation will come. The generation of tribulation against the church. But good enough, we have the uh, inspiration of the day from the Holy Scriptures and from the assurance of Jesus Christ at the corridors of the immediate future. The K-text is found in Romans chapter 13, verse 11, which says, And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. This is from the King James Version. From the today's English Version, it says, you must do this because you know that the time has come for you to wake up from your sleep. For the moment when we will be saved is closer now than it was when we first believed. This is from the today's English version. And the third, another reason for right living is this. You know how late it is. Time is running out. Wake up for the coming of the Lord is nearer now than when we first believe the living Bible. This is about the message to the people of God to wake up and to prepare for the last and final battle of Armageddon that is coming. Again, we do not pray for that, but we have to prepare for that because this is a church and this is a religious organization. This is not a political institution. This is a religious institution. And in the world today, in this time of confusion, that the world is so confused about the present global uh, pandemic, we have to cling to the promises of Jesus Christ and the Holy Scriptures to not to be afraid, instead to become inspired. Because we are now standing at the corridors of the final day. That now is our salvation, salvation is nearer than we expected before. Today it is near. Now, we will be presenting to you about the reality of that near, of that nearer day of salvation. We have to acknowledge and to know our position today, where we are now in prophecy. Where are we now in prophecy? Go back to the, to the basic. In Daniel chapter 2, uh, at the historic window of the prophetic future, we can see where we are now in prophecy. This is now our emphasis for this first topic for, for this week's uh, uh, spiritual emphasis. That today, in this prophetic yardstick, and forecasted in Daniel chapter 2, we are already at the tip of the two nails. Remember that. Please don't forget this. We are already at the tip of the two nails. No longer during the time of the golden head, or the breast, uh, or the hips, or the legs. We are already at the tip of the two nails. That's why our title is telling us that we are already standing at the brink, at the, at the corridors of the immediate future. And the immediate future is the second coming of Jesus Christ. 
And now, we know that the stone is about to strike the image. This is a prophecy that has been uh, proven by history. We are now tracing the historical background of this prophecy and it is already proven for thousands of years until our very own generation that we are now living at the tip of the toenails and the stone is about to strike the image in our very own time and we are very excited to see that what might be the future holds okay what might be the future holds what might uh, be happening next year or the next year or the next month we do not know that now we are now uh, in the season of the second wave and we are expecting the third wave. And the Time Magazine is telling us that the next wave will be more uh, striking than the first. And millions will die. It's very confusing. And many medical authorities who are scholars, medical scholars, who are trying to insist that it is not. It's confusing. And the Seventh-day Adventist people are standing within that confusing uh, principles of the world today. And praise God, we have the inspiration and the guidance from the prophecy. Have you noticed that we are now experiencing the rehearsal before the stone strikes? Good enough we have the coronavirus today. If not, we do not know how to interpret Revelation chapter 13. That Revelation chapter 13 is telling us about no one can buy or sell unless you have the mark of the beast, that is 666. People, religious people, are concentrating on the 666. Mm. They do not concentrate about a solution on how to stand against all odds during that time. We cannot simply understand about Revelation 13 unless we have to experience the real thing in our present time today, now that we have the pandemic, now you know, you cannot buy and you cannot sell. How can we realize? How can that prophecy be realized in us? Now we have the samples, and this is now the rehearsal. At the first strike of the pandemic, last March, there I realized myself, when you cannot enter into the mall, you, you cannot go around. You have the money, you cannot buy. I called up our relatives in America. They have the money, nothing can buy. In the Philippines, no money, and so cannot buy. They have the money, but nothing to buy. We do not have the money, so nothing to buy. Okay? So that's the situation. And so we have experienced that until today. Now we understand what is the meaning of Revelation 13. When you cannot buy and you cannot sell. That is the, uh, the, the blessing sometimes of the crisis. When we will be able to understand what we'll do, what we will do during the final crisis. And so it is very clear that God is now giving us the idea and the rehearsal on what to do, to do during the crisis. Now, that the stone is about to strike, that is what we have to prepare of. Prepare our hearts. Some of the Adventist people in the Mindanao area, they're calling us uh, about their plan to flee to the mountains this time. In Onila, Ikaw, Pastor Rubrico, i-lecture mo dahil sa mga kongregasyon na magpabukid na sila, magbalon lang og asin, magbalon lang asin. Pagkatapos daw eh, uh, dito na, magpuyo, to prepare for the second coming. That is the mentality of the fanatical people. So we'd like to to uh, announce this to the Adventist congregation. And we, are, we continue to announce that in every congregation. Please,
Kalma lang. Okay? God is still in control. Please don't be fanatical. Wait for the order from the general. And the general is Jesus Christ. Even you are living inside a metropolis. If you are like Daniel, okay, you can witness to the people during the times of crisis. Now that we are living in the extreme situation, this is now the opportunity to witness that God is still in control. Many medical people uh, were resigning, uh, even in Adventist hospitals. Some are now resigned. And we have the, the report of the Adventist people in the medical institutions who resigned, have already resigned. Please don't resign. That is your, please don't resign. That is your ministry in the front line. And God will be with you. And God will be in your hands. Today, we believe this. Because this is a basic uh, biblical tenets, one of the basic biblical tenets in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. That the stone is about to strike. That the second coming of Jesus Christ is near. That's why our text a while ago says that our salvation today is nearer than we first believed. And today, we have to believe that our salvation is nearer than before during the time of Paul or during the time of our baptism. It is nearer than before. And the second coming of Jesus Christ is about to blast from that heavenly atmosphere to the planet Earth. Okay. Um, this is now the uh, perspective of the, of the human settlement in Mars. Uh, architects and engineers are now designing the human settlement in Mars. Why? Because they are now planning to settle some Mars by 2022. Uh, because our scientists and bright people in the world believe that someday soon an asteroid will strike the, Earth, the planet Earth and will annihilate the whole human race. Or this pandemic will continue to annihilate the people in the planet Earth. Before that will happen, they will flee to other planets. And, okay, we have, they have many uh, styles of human settlements. Isane. And then the other one. This one, di na testing na karon sa California desert kung ano himuon dito sa Mars. Maunang ilang mga design. Parang greenhouse. So that, di sila matamaan sa radiation. Radiation. Okay, that's it. What these people are thinking about? Are they thinking to flee from the, from the planet Earth and to avoid final destruction or the final crisis before Jesus Christ will come? Or they do not believe the second coming of Jesus Christ? That is the problem. To the Christians, Christ is the solution and Christ is the answer. But what is the question? The question is, even the Christians are now uh, beginning to doubt about the assurance of the words of Jesus Christ. Now that we have reached this far, that the people are thinking to colonize other planets in the universe. First, Mars in our own solar system. And then they will transfer to Jupiter and go outside the uh, planetary system of our solar system and colonize other planets in other systems. That is what they are thinking about. But the question is this. Because the Holy Scripture is 
telling us that Jesus Christ will come. Will come to what? To the planet Earth. If Christ will come sa planet Earth, paano ka madala kay tuwa ka sa Mars? That's the question. If you are in Jupiter, ho, oh, paano ka makasunod kay Kristo sa langit kay wala ka sa planet Earth? That's the problem. That's your problem. If you believe that. And then, if the Bible is telling us about the thinking of Jesus Christ to save, if possible, all people in the planet Earth, kinsa lang ang makasarang o makakaya sa pamasahe pa Mars, sa, sa rocket. Only the billionaires. And to buy a housing unit in Mars, only the billionaire, billionaires can do that. Kumusta ka rin ang mga pobre? Di na maluwas. That's the question. Sa mga kaigsoonan, my beloved brethren, this is not the plan of God. Jesus Christ died here in the planet Earth, not in Mars. And so He will come again to save His people in the planet Earth and bring us to that heavenly home to, to receive our treasure dream, that life everlasting. So today, we have the inspiration from Jesus Christ Himself. Again, back to this diagram. Both the seven trumpets and the seven seals are located inside the 2,300 year prophecy diagram. Have you noticed that? They are located inside. Now, our situation for today is at the end of the sixth trumpet and at the end of the sixth seal. A while ago, we were talking about the Daniel chapter 2 in the Old Testament, that we are already at the tip of the two nails. Now, in the New Testament, in the book of Revelation, we are now already at the end of the sixth trumpet and the end of the six seals. What's next? The seventh trumpet and the seventh seal. This seventh trumpet and the seventh seal pariho ni nga mauna na ang second coming of Jesus Christ. Meaning to say, there is no allowance anymore except to face the challenge. And the challenge is to reform our hearts so that we can be able to achieve our treasure dream, that life everlasting when Jesus Christ will come at the seventh trumpet and at the seventh seal. May isa pa, at the seventh plague. At the seventh plague, Jesus Christ will come. I would like to uh, show this again to you about the Mount Nebo in the, in the Holy Scriptures. This is very interesting because Moses was at Mount Nebo before he died. When he was at Mount Nebo, he landed and he saw the gleaming assurance of the promised land. And he saw the promised land and he died. But his people, Israel, reached the promised land by faith. That's why faith in history. So by faith, they reached the promised land and Moses ordered them to go. This is now the Mount Nebo in the Judean desert in Israel. We visited the place. And this is now the place. At our back with Pastor Asoy, paglantaw mo dito, you can see the assurance of the promised land ang Israel. Mauna, dira sila nag barog, maglantaw dito. Tanan nga tourist, maglantaw dito. Makita mo, Moses was there. Wali. And he saw the promised land at the top of Mount Nebo. Okay. And we are now standing at the top of Mount Nebo. Be before us, na dool na lang is the promised land, the heavenly Canaan. Okay, have you noticed that we are now reviewing our prophetic doctrine? 
And this is an idea, a sure idea, and a tangible evidence that we have the spirit of prophecy. That we are now standing at the brink of eternity, standing at the Mount of Nebo, Mount Nebo, and we can now see the promised land. Please don't be afraid. And be strong according to the instruction of God to Joshua. And cross the Jordan River to claim the promised land. Now that we are standing at the top of Mount Nebo, please be inspired. Because we are now in the period of inspiring a time in the history of our lives. Today, the Seventh-day Adventist people is the church. We believe that this is a church of prophecy. So please be strong, people of God, especially the workers in the Adventist, at the Adventist uh, Hospital Cebu, to stay on the line, in the front line, to face these challenges before Jesus Christ will come. And in that heavenly home, you can witness about your services in this planet Earth to help many people in their medical needs this time. Wherefore, ye shall do my statutes and keep my judgments and do them and ye shall dwell in the land of safety. This is a promise and this is an assurance to the Seventh Adventist people today. Just follow the order. Just keep the commandments and someday soon, we will be dwelling in the land of safety. And the land of safety is that heavenly home. That is Leviticus chapter 25, verse 18. Okay. Back to our uh, K-text. And that knowing the time. And now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. This is from the King James Version. And we simply believe that today the Seventh Adventist people are thinking about that heavenly home. Praise the Lord for that. Matthew 24, 21 and 22. For then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world. To this time, no, never ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened. There should be no flesh be saved. For the elect's sake, those days should be shortened. What does it mean? If we are now at the brink of the final end, God will help us to shorten the days. This is Matthew 24, 21 and 22. For the sake of the elect, God will shorten the days and the final evangelization. God will shorten the days. God will make a shortcut so that the sufferings of his people will not continue. Who knows? God will cut, cut down immediately in the near future, some days, some days soon, the global pandemic. Again, another text. Romans chapter 9, verse 28. For I will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth? Have you noticed that? In the time of the end, God will cut short the work. In other words, we are expecting, we are expecting the glorious coming of Jesus Christ in the near future. Or I would say, in the immediate future. Now, is the final preaching of the gospel. We know that the gospel is entrusted, that divine responsibility See, responsibility is entrusted at the hands of the Seventh-day Adventist people. The final gospel will be opened. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 4, God will open the door, meaning to say, God will open the front gates of opportunities for the Adventist people to preach the gospel in these final days for the salvation of men. We know already that the prophecy in the book of Isaiah is telling us that God will open the door not only in the Philippines, not only in America, not only in Australia, but in the Middle Eastern countries that is found in the book of Isaiah. Also in the book of Isaiah, God will open the door in China. China is prophesied in the book of Isaiah. Okay? Unbelievable 
48 Chinese people, but God will open the door in, in, in China someday soon. We will be expecting massive conversion of the Chinese people. Today, they are almost the enemy of, of all nations in the world. But China someday soon not, will, will become not only a blue, uh, military and economic superpower, China will become a religious superpower someday soon. China has already a history of a Sabbath, as a Sabbath-keeping country. You read the typing revolution in your uh, laptop. Uh, you type typing revolution. There, you can see that the history of China, that China has the history of a Sabbath-keeping people. Only those Sabbath-keeping people were destroyed during the coming of the, of the Westerners and introduced drugs in China. Later on, was, communism was introduced. That's why China now is a communist country. But when history will repeat itself, China will become a Sabbath-keeping country. Okay, very interesting. And the Middle Eastern country will become a Sabbath-keeping country. It's in the prophecy already. Today, the Seventh-day Adventist people is only 22 million in the whole global community. That 22 million is nothing compared to almost 8 billion people in the world. But someday soon, this group of people, this religious movement, will become a buffer zone between the Muslims and the Jewish people and also the Chinese people. Because they will, according to the prophetic forecast, they will support the sanctuary during the final crisis of Earth's history. So now, we must be inspired of that. We do not know what will happen during the fulfillment of Revelation chapter 13, when we cannot buy and cannot sell. The God is preparing something great during that time, that the Middle Eastern countries, that very rich countries in the Middle East, who are now in their hands a, a wash of cash, huh? will support the sanctuary that is literally written in the book of Isaiah. So there are exciting and interesting things will happen during the final crisis. Therefore, with these 22 million people in the world today, but complete of facilities, the medical, the educational, the publishing, and other facilities to preach the gospel in the world, we, this is Seventh-day Adventist people. Now, we are now preaching the final gospel. Many people are listening to us today. This is the time of uh, electronic communication. And many people are watching us today. And many people are already baptized in the Seventh-day Adventist Church today. Because they realized that what we are preaching before and we are preaching today, I correct and we are perfectly correct. And the more we are correct in this time of crisis, and when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption. Draw it nigh. Luke 21, 28. This is about the people, for the people of God today. That since we are now experiencing this time of crisis and the signal of the second coming of Jesus Christ, we have to look up and lift up our heads for our salvation is drawing nigh. This is about our key text that our salvation is nearer than before. And that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake, awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe before. You must do this because you know that the time has come for you to wake up from your sleep. For the moment when we will be saved is closer now than it was when we first believed. You must do this because you know that the time has come for you to wake up from your sleep. For the moment when we will be saved is closer now than it was when we believed. This is very important for us. That's why we pasted huh, in our presentation three times. 
three times to emphasize that our salvation is nearer down now than when we first believed. You have the, the, the living Bible there. You have the copy of this. Another reason for right living is this. You know now late it is. Time is running out. Wake up, for the coming of the Lord is nearer now than when we first believed. And this is the uh, message for today. My beloved brethren, uh, lest we forget that we are now marching to Zion and the faith and the victory of our faith is about to be ended in the culmination during the, the graduation in that heavenly home. Please pray for that and please pray for each other so that we can survive the crisis and the present crisis, global crisis today and enjoy to see the spectacular coming of Jesus Christ in the final day. And that is the only hope of humanity when Christ will come. May it be that the uh, inspiration of the Holy Spirit will be its own, one of us as we uh, continue our w daily uh, spiritual emphasis. Please pray for the next topic for uh, tomorrow until the Sabbath. The Sabbath will be our uh, graduation. A Sabbath noon during the divine service. Now tomorrow, please watch out. Our next topic will be remnants of the immediate future. That is our tomorrow's topic. Uh, and uh, I'd like to, to say hello sa mga latecomers, uh, sa mga bago nag open sa ilang cellphone o sa ilang laptop. Uh, see you each other again tomorrow and listen to the next presentation. Thank you very much for coming and for listening our message for today. May God bless you and God bless you and bless you. Pagkanindot sa mensahe nga atong napamatian ni Nintak Naas Kabuntagon, kininaghatag ka na itong assurance na taliwala sa krisis nga itong ito bangkaron, adunay mga saad ang ginoo alang sa matag ka na ito, kung dili ta mahadlok. Now, I would like to invite everyone to our garden of prayer and to set our minds akong basahon diri sa libro ni Propita Jeremias, Kapitulo 33, Dos o tres. Ingon diri, Mao kini ang giingon ni Hiyuba, Taugon mo ako, O ako mutubag kanimo, O magapakita kanimo, O dag ko mga butang, O malisod, Nga wala mo hibalui. Ngaon nini kabuntagon, Atong iapil sa pagampo, Ang mga kaigsuna nato Nga naa sa balatian, Brother Ririk Rilampagos, Sister Yulita Villanueva, Brother Alex Polgirinas, Sister Lauren Kate Panal, Brother Bilden Domingo, Brother Vicente Carillo, Sister Mauricia Casas, Sister Rosalinda Suson. Brother Roldan Sanchez o Sister Annabel Carmelotes. Ang atong hospital karon adon natay 33 ka mga pasyente ato iapil sila sa pagampo. Atong iapil sa pagampo ang ato nga naunta God will intervene on this COVID-19 crisis. Ang atong hospital projects and operation as well as the administrators and all workers of Adventist Hospital Cebu. Maingon man, ang atong mga ng mga uh, Adventist Hospitals sa Tibuok, Pilipinas. Akong giauhag ang matagosa sa pagluhod ala sa pagampo.
langit nun ang mga amahan o silimbawan nga Diyos. Ani a kami nagaduol kanimo ni Taknaas Kabuntagon. Among gihiusa ang among tagsatagsa ka mga kaugalingon. Aron ipatugbaw nga na kanimo ang among mga hangyo o mga pag-ampo. Nga niini na kainapos ng kapanahonan. Nining krisis nga giatubang karun sa kalibutan. Ang imong mga katawahan. Adunay daghan nga mga pangutana diha silang tagsa-tagsa ka mga kaugalingon. Apan salamat nga ikaw nagbilin o mga saad alang sa matag sa kanamo. Nga talawa, taliwala nining tanan. Kami makabaton o kasiguruhan nga anaa ikaw andam sa paghatag sa among magkinahanglan proteksyon o panalangin aron ingon nga imong makatawhan mailhan kami sa kalibutan nga pinasahi og imong mga pinili lamang kami naghangyo kanimo Ginoo nga taliwala nining tanan ikaw magauban kanamo ang among makaigsunan nga anaas na kalainlaing suok sa kalibutan nga nakiguban ka namo karon sa paghimo nining week of prayer nga nakiguban ka namo sa pagampo nining panahona imo sab nakita ang ilang tagsa-tagsa ka mga kahimtang sa kinabuhi ikaw na kahibalo sa ilang mga problema sa among mga problema o kami nagatugyan o nagasalig sa among mga kinabuhi diha sa iyong mga kamot kay diha kanimo Adunay kasulbaran ang tanan ng mga problema ng among giatubang. Ug diha kanimo ang lulan ng among gipasan kini mahimong magaan. Imong nabati ang mga pangalan sa among makaigsuunan nga naa sa balatian. Daghan pa ginoo ang wala namo masangpit ang ilang pangalan. Anaa sila sa nagkalain-lain ng kahimtang sa panglawas. Ginoo, ingon nga ikaw, mo ang among gialgaran, ikaw ang among gisaligan, ikaw ang among gituuhan, hinaot o Diyos, nga niining urasa, ikaw magaduaw kanila, hikapa ang ilang mga kalawasan, ayuha sila ginoo, tuguti, nga ang mga medical professionals nga nagatiman kanila, hatagan mo sa kaalam, ang mga tambal nga gidapat kanila, hatagi sa imong bendisyon o kahom, aron kini ginoo mo ipikto diya sila makalawasan o sila mamaayo gikan sa ilang mga balatian among giampo diya kanimo ginoo ang imong pag-intervener nining kaso sa COVID-19 nga nagapadayon hangtod karon ginoo ang mga scientist ang mga eksperto sa natad sa medikal nagapangita og paagi unsaon kini pagsulbad Apan kun wala ikaw, walay mahimo ang tao. Mao nga amo kining gitugyan diha kanimo uban nang paglaom. Nga pinaagi sa imong giya, kining tanan makabaton og kasulbaran. Among giampo Ginoo ang among 33 ka mga pasyente karon nga naa dinhi sa Adventist Hospital Cebu. Og ang tanan nga mga pasyente nga naa karon sa mga tambalanan, labi na sa mga tambalanan nga imong gitukod Adventist Hospitals sa tibuok Pilipinas, hinaot ginoo nga ikaw magaduaw kanilang tanan o magaayo kanila. Magatabang sa tanan ng mga frontliners, mga magbubuhat, imong tabangan, nga taliwala nining tanan, ikaw ginoo maghatag o kadasig, kaligon o mahimog hapon nga instrumento kahayag aron na kining maong mga pasyente, makabaton o kahigayunan nga makaila kanimo pinaagis pag-atiman kanila. Hinaot o Diyos, ngayon mong panalanginan sa ang mga projects and operation nining imong tambalanan na taliwala sa hagit na gitubang nining panahona, hinaot o Diyos nga na ikaw magapadayon sa pag-abre sa imong tambuanan sa langit, sa paghatag sa mga panalangin na gikinahanglan, aron nga bisan pa nining tanan na gitubang makapadayon gihapon sa mga proyekto o pag-operate. Uh, aron sa ingon ni Ana, magapadayon ang pagservisyo ni Ini sa komunidad. Among giampo ang among mga administrators. 
hinaot o Diyos, nga padayon ikaw, nga magagabay ka nila. Mga kaubanan sa buhat, matagpamilya ang girepresentahan, ginoo among isalig ang tanan diha ka nimo ba na paglaom, nga tipigin, tipigan nimo ang among panglawas, tipigan nimo ang among makinabuhi, kauban na sa mga minahal sa kinabuhi, aron nga magapadayon kami ginoo sa pagsirbisyo nga na ka nimo, pag-alagad nga na ka nimo, hangtod nga mapadayag ang imong bugtong anak. Dagang salamat ginoo sa imong pagtubag sa mga pag-ampo, Amo kinigi pangayo, pinagis pangalan ni Ginoong Yesus nga amo maluluwas. Amen. Shall we all stand and sing our theme song, Faith is the Victory. our heads for the prayer. Almighty Father in heaven, we are blessed with the message by your servant, Pastor James Rubrico. May it will inspire us in our daily walk with you. Father, bless us today in our individual activities. We also pray for our dear patients. May you'll visit them in their sick beds, provide them comfort and care that they need. Father, we also pray for each of our staff and administrators that we may be channels of blessing in your service. We pray for your project and operations. Continue to bless the persons involved and that it may bring progress for the good of your institution, Adventist Hospital Cebu, as well as it may bring glory to your name. Forgive our sins. This we pray in Christ's name. Amen.